hi there and welcome to this 10th issue of our MVQ Bite Size Training. Uh, I'm Neil Selvage and welcome on board. Uh, for those that have uh, already looked through some of the units, I hope they've proved helpful and useful for you. Um, certainly working with some of my learners, they've been uh, delving into different units. So uh, thanks for joining us and hopefully this next unit um, will, be, will prove useful for you. Uh, today we're going to be looking at predominantly, well, carrying on our journey with the occupational standards. So NOS, National Occupational Standards. We're still installing gas membranes. That's what we do. Um, but we're looking at uh, unit 641. So our previous units were 612, 613, which were very specific to gas membrane installing. But this one is more of a health and safety in the workplace. And it can be treated quite generically, as in other occupations have to cover this unit as well. So whether you're a bricklayer, plumber, carpenter, but again, all specialist trades, this is a mandatory unit for MVQ level two. So some of my um, first uh, slides will show you, well, I've put a slide up there of our, our gas hazards. We're gonna cover that and how it relates to a generic uh, look at health and safety, but quite specific to gas membranes as well. So that'll pop up again a little bit later in the presentation. So when we go back to the, the very first, well, the first unit 1.1, um, comply with information from workplace induction, what you'll find is there's a lot of duplication. So we've already done it in our issue two, we covered this. Likewise, 1.2, the use and, of health and safety and control to carry out the activity was covered in issue nine. Yeah, so I'm not gonna go on too much. I'll refer you back to those two issues. Um, 1.3, comply with notices, statutory safety notices and warning notices. Well, sites often provide that and we can look at it as we, as we look, go on a site visit and look around site. 1.4, um, health and safety control measures. Again, looking at PPE, RPE, so respiratory and uh, LEV, local exhaust ventilation. Uh, issue four, we covered that during um, when we looked at confined space working, but again, it could be generic as well in the form of having to wear a dust mask because there's a dusty environment or you're working with fumes that are generated from other people. So again, refer back to issue four on that. Uh, 1.5, we covered that in issue two where we looked at the control of uh, equipment relevant to the work. So how you're using your equipment and again, types of health and safety legislation was covered in issue three. So there's a lot of recapping here and you'll find that similar questions are asked at both, um, across both fronts for gas membrane installing and for general workplace. Yeah. And how to comply with the control measures that have been identified by risk assessment and SSW, safe system of work. Again, we covered that in, in issue two. So getting on to something that's a little bit uh, new to us here, 2.1, it's all about recognizing hazards and how to re report hazards, uh, changes in circumstances within the workplace. Well, we work in a construction environment, so there's lots changing all the time. And I always ask learners, what are the main things that change during the course of, or you know, between visits, for example, might have a gap a month between first visit and second visit. You get a lot of changes, people might change, the personnel on site, other teams, other occupations that are on site. There might be changes in the layout of the pathways, the traffic plan. So having a full awareness, it might require you to go back and do a new induction or just recap with the, the daily safety notice boards because they're changing on a daily basis as well. So just be mindful of, of that and you will be questioned on it. The, the next slide, let me just move on, here we go. Um, 2.2, um, it's listing, you know, list typical hazards. So it's asking to list, and we can see the gentleman there just uh, writing down on his clipboard what hazard you see. We do a similar type of thing for the assessment where we will look around site in your work area of the things that are around. And normally there's a digger working in close proximity. There's normally other trades. There's normally products that are local to you that could either fall or be hazardous in the form of a liquid or have a cost requirement. So um, having a look at that, your interface with the public as well, you know, do you have to park outside and carry your stuff across the road to get to site? All these little things we must look at. Yeah. Now these two I've combined for, they, they both kind of ask us a very similar question. List the current health and safety executive top 10 
Well, we don't look at it in um, a top 10, as in you've got to list them in an order of one to 10. Um, we do them specifically for your site hazards and for your occupation. So for gas membraning, we're back to our slide there with, um, I've identified safety hazards as acute hazards because safety is something that happens or acute hazards happen very quickly. So we can see I've highlighted, I've circled there three um, elements, which is this, like CO2, which is an asphyxiant. We've got the explosive atmosphere, EX, um, with methane and hydrogen. And then we've also got flammable uh, products. So these events happen very quickly, very unannounced. You don't have a lot of time to react, if any time at all to react. Um, no warnings. So they would be your safety risks. Um, but then there's other safety risks around site as well, things like plant movement, other occupations working closely near you doing something that might be hazardous that you're not aware of, i.e. drilling or shot firing um, fixings, for example. Uh, there could be overhead works, uh, pouring of concrete or welding, stud welding of, of floors. So they could be hazards that could come down. People grinding uh, products near you where they're creating sparks could create a fire hazard. Yeah. But when we look at the health hazards, health is something that's more of a long-term uh, issue, but we encounter this with our ground gas world. I've, I've indicated there we've got the uh, carbon, carbon monoxide, um, which is the skull and crossbones. We've got radio, radon, radioactive elements, VOCs and oxidizing elements. Now these aren't necessarily gonna be acute. Well, they're not acute, they're what we call chronic. These take a long time to develop within the human, within the building or you know, predominantly it's with the human where uh, your body will suffer because of the exposure to these. Now, for a lot of time for us working on site and construction, we don't have long, long-term exposure because we're in for a day, two days, three days, and we're out in a very good, well-ventilated, safe area. Yeah, But we must think of the health risks as well related to the general health and safety on site, that there could be um, elements of um, noise around us. There could be dust generated around us. So be mindful of that when you um, are working because they're health hazards to you as well. Yeah. The next one we've got there is also stating the changes or the changes in circumstances within the workplace um, and how individuals see the changes in hazards. So we've got two people there might look at things very, very differently. How are you gonna state them hazards and report them? Because they might need to go back if they're serious. Um, some people often just see a hazard, don't report it. The key thing is that we are reporting these um, because we want to prevent other people from, from being harmed as well as ourselves, yeah? So we've also got, um, you know, maintain the uh, contribute to discussions, providing feedback about doing work, working safely to policies and practices. So we can see manual handling is a big one. That will come up in our final unit, 643. Yeah. Um, I'm also attending things like toolbox talks. Um, very valuable time spent, you know, possibly daily, weekly, um, when the ch team changes that people are able to offer feedback and contribute to the health and safety in the workplace. The welfare on site, we talk about what provision is required and can you contribute? So if you walked into a bathroom that looked like this on site, uh, what would your first thoughts be? It doesn't look very well kept. Should it be reported? Definitely, you know, somebody needs to clean that up. You know, not a very nice job, unfortunately, but you know, welfare is a requirement that should be kept in a good working order. Yeah. Also looking after all our PPE and our own health and safety products. So we can see there a nice um, locker with high vis boots, all the things that we spoke about in a previous unit. But how do you store that? Yeah, we work very awkward as in we're traveling from site to site on a daily basis. So being able to um, store that within your van or you might have a location back at your work at your yard where you can store that. So I've, as you saw, um, I stopped halfway through there because I thought that was quite a big unit and um, we're a good few minutes into that one. So what I'm going to do is break uh, the issue 10 into two parts. So all being well in the next, uh, next few days, I'll get the, the next unit of that up and hopefully that'll help you. So thanks again for watching. Um, all my usual links are there for, for you to contact me and thanks for those that have been contacting me. 
Um, you can also subscribe to the channel. So I am putting up regular um, new uh, bite-sized training. So thanks for joining us and um, look after yourselves and I'll see you for the next session. Thanks now, bye.